Alrighty. And we'll go ahead and start. All right, so my name is Jasmine. I am the Wellcats Nutrition GA and also a diet or registered dietitian. Um, today, the recipe that we're going to be cooking is the honey shiracha glazed meatballs. Um, it's not really so much a cooking class as we normally have going on at Wellcats. It's more of a cooking demonstration because I'm in my house, as y'all can see right now, um, instead of the normal classroom that I will be hopefully um, using in the following semester, maybe. We'll see. Um, so anyway, we're cooking honey shiracha glazed meatballs. The topic for this month um, that I've been making all my recipes for is um, meal prepping. So last time we had falafel, we had a, a meal prepped falafel recipe with a tzatziki sauce. Um, and this time we have the meatballs. So basically what I was just trying to do is give y'all um, good entree options that you could make a lot of at one time and then kind of um, use those throughout the week. So these meatballs should last about four to five days. So they should last you about the whole week and you can use them for your dinner, for your lunch. Um, I personally have used kind of a variation of this um, for lunches. It's really good with brown rice, which I'm gonna show you at the end of the class today. Um, but yes, so we'll go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start with, let me share my screen really quickly. Just the recipe so that we can y'all can follow along. Um, so we're gonna start with the um, nutrition information. So this makes about eight serving, which is about five meatballs each. Whenever I actually did this, pra I practiced this recipe before I'm presenting it to y'all just like an hour ago. And um, it made 24 meatballs, so a little bit less than the eight servings, but still about five meatballs each. Um, the calories for this one is about 200 and about 300 calories for the whole serving of meatballs. That's not including the rice, that's just the meatballs by themselves. And then protein is 27 grams, fat is 11 grams, and carbohydrate is about 19 grams. Um, so the ingredients that we're gonna be using today is the lean ground turkey, two pounds of that, one cup of the whole wheat panko breadcrumbs, which I have here, um, two eggs, which I'll get out of the fridge in a second, a fourth a cup of green onions that are all chopped. I went ahead and did all the chopping of everything so that y'all don't have to just watch me chop onions or watch me chop, chop garlic or ginger. And then for the um, meatballs, we're gonna have gar garlic powder, salt, and then black pepper. For the glaze, it is a fourth a cup of sriracha. And like I said, I just made these not too long ago. And then I had my husband test try or test them out. And he and I really like spicy food, but if you're not as much into spicy food, then I would recommend lowering the amount of sriracha because they were pretty spicy. And then we have three tablespoons of the reduced sodium soy sauce, which I have here. I got the less sodium version. It has significantly less sodium than the, um, like the normal soy sauce, but there's an even lower sodium one if you wanted to do that one. And then um, two or three tablespoons of rice vinegar, three tablespoons of honey, one tablespoon of the grated fresh ginger, three cloves of garlic, and half a teaspoon of the toasted sesame oil. So I went ahead and preheated my oven. That is preheating over there. And then I have my large bowl here. I'm going to switch back to stop screen sharing so that y'all can actually see what I'm doing. But I also need to follow along with the recipe. <laughs> oh, this, these Zoom classes are crazy. Okay, so in my large bowl here, I'm going to mix together the turkey, the breadcrumbs, eggs, green onions, garlic powder, and salt and pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my dry ingredients. So I'm gonna mix the breadcrumbs, the garlic powder, and the salt and pepper all in this bowl. And then I'm gonna put in my um, turkey and then I'm gonna put in my eggs. So start with the pepper. And this is just the ground pepper. It's, um, yep, it's half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of the pepper. Put that to the side. Half a teaspoon of the salt. And this is a pretty salty recipe, like especially the glaze is really salty. So I wouldn't recommend doing more than the half a teaspoon for that. And then half a teaspoon of the garlic powder. All righty. I'm just going to mix that actually just with this little thing. 
just needs to be mixed a little bit. Whenever I originally made this recipe a little bit ago, I put the in order of what it said. So I did the turkey and then the breadcrumbs, eggs, etc. Like I followed the order, but then I found that I had to mix it for a really long time to make sure that the spices actually were well distributed through the turkey. So this way, all my spices are already mixed up and they're gonna be mixed with the breadcrumbs. So hopefully it will more evenly distribute. All right, now I'm gonna put in my breadcrumbs. I do a cup of that. This is the whole wheat. Honestly, I don't really think you can tell the difference between the normal panko breadcrumbs and the whole wheat. They're, they hold together pretty much the same. So feel free to use either kind, but the whole wheat just gives you kind of that whole grain option for your day. And then the eggs I'll do next. Let me get those really quickly. eggs and my turkey. Again, I'm not actually using correct mixing utensils, but I'm just going to mix the spices in with the breadcrumbs. Make sure it's all incorporated. Actually, I'm not going to do the eggs next. I'm going to do the turkey next and then I'll do the eggs very, very last. All right, I think that's pretty good. And the turkey that I got was the um, extremely lean, so it's 99% lean. You could get the 93.7 if you wanted kind of a little bit more fat in there. Um, I think the recipe was actually written for the 93.7 mixture instead of the 99% lean, but I prefer the 99%. Okay, mix that in there. Just really the goal here is to make sure that everything is really, really well incorporated. I probably should have used my left hand to do this so I could still use my right to do other things, but I'll wash it off. <laughs> okay. Now I'll go ahead, put my eggs in there. And then while these are baking, I'll roll them up. Oh wait, let's go ahead and put the green onions in. Completely forgot about those. There we go. Now it has a little bit more color to it. I was wondering what was different than last time. Okay, now I'll put my eggs. Just put in two eggs. Make sure you don't get any of the shell in there, obviously. That would not be very tasty. in there. And then after we incorporate everything and mix it all together, then we're just going to roll them into the one and a half inch balls. You can do a little bit bigger if you wanted or a little bit smaller, just depending on what you want to eat it with. Um, last time I stuck really closely to the one and a half inch. And like I said, I made about 24 of those. Okay. The egg's taking a little bit longer to incorporate. I can still see some of the yolk is just all by itself. Okay, make sure that I didn't forget anything. Nope, looks good. All right, I'm gonna move this bowl to the side and then bring my pan over here. Oh geez. Bring my pan over here. And I'm just gonna roll a couple of these for now, or I might as well roll all of them. And then while I'm rolling them, y'all can let me know if you have any questions so far or any things that you would like me to answer for you. Really simple recipe. It takes all in all, uh, I'd say about 20 minutes to prepare everything, maybe less, maybe 15. Um, and then also another 20 minutes to cook everything because we're going to be making the glaze at the same time as the meatballs are actually cooking. All right. I'm not rolling these quite as nicely as I did last time because I'm, I don't want y'all to just have to sit and watch me roll meatballs forever. <laughs> Mm, 
yeah, I actually might just do a couple more and then go ahead and put those in for time's sake. Okay. I'll just do these for now. Let me wash off my hands. Turkey and chicken specifically are one of those meats that you really should watch out for um, because they harbor some pretty crazy bacteria. So make sure that everything is kept separately, all your cutting boards, all your mixing utensils, um, and then wash your hands between handling it and before preparing anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in my oven and then I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes um, you could do 25 if you wanted a little bit more toasty, but whenever I cooked them last time for 20 minutes, I still had plenty of, um, plenty, or it was the fine temperature. Let me let Patty in. Hi, Patty, I'm sorry. I have it all that's recorded though for future viewers. Okay, that's fine, sorry. Sorry I'm late. Oh no, no worries. Go stick the meatballs in the oven. Okay. Hey Google. Set a timer for 20 minutes. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare everything for the sauce. I have my saucepan here. So for this one, I'm gonna need a fourth a cup of sriracha. And like I said earlier, if you don't like as much spice, then add a little bit less. I got my fourth a cup here, cause that is a lot. That's a lot of sriracha. Put that in there. And then three tablespoons of the soy sauce. And again, I'm using the less sodium version, but there's even a lower sodium version if you wanted to use that one. Okay, and then three tablespoons of the honey. Two and three. And then and, and, and Jasmine, is that just regular? I mean, is that your, your Texas honey? Yep. This is just my regular Texas honey. Okay. Got it from H-E-B. Nothing too fancy about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the um, rice vinegar, three tablespoons of that. Oh, goodness. That came out a lot faster than I expected. It's going to go easier. And then do like half of one because I got some overflow. Okay. And then... It also calls for one tablespoon of the grated ginger. So if y'all are not super familiar with ginger or have you, if you've never used ginger before in a recipe, this is what it kind of looks like. It's already all chopped up. I've used it before already. Um, I usually just peel it. I, so I get a piece that kind of looks like that all peeled. And then I went ahead and did the grating of it because again, I don't think anyone wants to watch me grate ginger but you can use either the grated or you can use the ground ginger. I noticed that whenever I made this last time, there were a lot of like floating chunks of the grated ginger just sitting in the sauce. And I kind of scooped around those to just get more of the sauce for my meatballs. Um, either one's really fine. This is not gonna have as much of a flavor. You're gonna have to put a lot more than this one. But since we're doing this recipe, I'm just gonna use these. So about one tablespoon I have in this bowl. And then three cloves of garlic. And um, Patty knows this, but I usually like to put a lot more garlic than the recipe calls for. But for the sake of the recipe and following it exactly, I have just three cloves here. They're large, but still only three. Okay, and then a half a teaspoon of the sesame, the toasted sesame oil. Um, I got this big giant bottle. You can also get smaller bottles, but I got this one just at HEB. And you want a half a teaspoon of that just to give it a teeny tiny bit of flavor because this stuff is really strong. I've made the mistake of 
accidentally putting way too much and then the toasted sesame oil really comes through. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna move y'all over to the stove and we're gonna go ahead, start whisking this and then I will show you the prepared product. Let's see if you can follow me over here. Sorry if this is making you dizzy. Let's see if I can set you up over here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start by turning it on the high heat or the highest that your oven can go. I'm gonna get a little whisk behind you. And um, then we're really going to wait until it comes to a complete boil. Then I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer for eight to 10 minutes and just kind of leave it like that. Um, if you wanted to see what the first one looked like all finished, I have it here. So this is from the first time around. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's kind of really dark. But um, yeah, you can kind of see the chunky garlic and the chunky ginger in there. I didn't love that. I probably would have used powder personally. Um, but what I ended up doing is I, I just tossed the meatballs in this and then um, tried to scoop as much of just the red sauce out and then poured that over the rest of my rice. And I'll show you that at the end. What the finished product looks like. Any questions so far? Again, sorry, I was late. No, no problem. <laughs> but, um, and you said that it was videotaped, but so do you find that the breadcrumbs really keep the turkey together because you know how turkey is very squishy and very yep. um almost watery i mean okay. not watery but you know compared to to ground oh yeah i totally know what you mean so um the breadcrumbs and the eggs i think the combination of both of those kind of makes a really nice paste that holds that turkey together a lot better i haven't made this recipe with either just the breadcrumbs or without or um, just the eggs are without, so I'm not able to tell you 100% sure, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm fairly positive that the combination of the eggs and the breadcrumbs along with the turkey makes a really nice ball. It actually came together perfectly, um, as I'll show you in a little bit, and um, yeah, it, it looks really delicious. Okay, great. And I also mentioned earlier, I don't know if you heard this, Patty, but um, you can probably use either the normal or the whole wheat panko breadcrumbs. It really doesn't, I don't think, make a difference besides the health factor. So the whole wheat is probably gonna have a little bit more of the nutritional value than just the, um, the normal. Okay. Okay, that already boiled because we barely have any liquid in our pot. That already boiled really, really quickly. Let's go back over here while that is simmering. I'm gonna check with Google to see how much more time we have. Hey Google, how much time is left on the timer? There's 13 minutes and 23 seconds left. All right, well we got, oh, I have two Googles in two different rooms and they're both answering me. Um, but anyway, so those are cooking for another 13 minutes. In the meantime, um, that sauce is gonna be cooking and I will show you what the finished product looks like and then if we have time at the end, I'll go ahead and also assemble another bowl for you. I'm gonna get that really quickly. All righty, let's see if y'all can see this. So this was the finished product. I put it over some brown rice, kinda, so I have the protein, I have a little bit of fat with the um, turkey and then obviously the tiny bit of toasted sesame oil. Then I have my carbohydrate, which is a, which is the rice. Um, I put a, a tiny drizzle of the sauce on the rice just to get more of that flavor. Um, again, my husband did try it and say that it was super duper spicy. So decrease the amount of shiracha if you wanted that and just make it more of like a honey, um, honey, a little bit of shiracha, a little bit of spicy Asian ginger garlic sauce. Um, yeah, it came together really well. And again, um, for meal prepping purposes, you could make like maybe three or four of these bowls and then kind of eat those throughout the week. Again, they will be fine. They'll be totally fine and safe for like three days in the refrigerator. And I haven't personally tried to freeze it, but I'm guessing it would probably freeze and reheat really well. So if you wanted to even go further, make a lot and then freeze 
several of them and use those for the following weeks, that would probably work fantastically. But um, so full disclosure, I am a vegetarian, so I am not going to eat these, but I'm going to get my <laughs> husband to um, co-host with me and he's going to come and just try them, kind of tell you about the flavor. And so <laughs> <laughs> because I can't, I can't give you a good, accurate description. I'm going to get a fork for him real fast. <laughs> and usually I'm going to try to do as many kind of plant-based recipes as possible so that I actually can eat it, or at least not using meat. But um, yeah, this, this recipe looked excellent and I thought it would be a fan favorite. So I went ahead and did this. All right. So All right. he's going to test try it and tell me how it is. So just upon looking at it, um, the meatball does, it looks like it held together really well, but he's going to have to tell me if it's dry because it looks a little, not super moist, but we'll see. I think the sauce might help with that. It's still very spicy. Yep, still very <laughs> spicy. <laughs> it's very good, but very spicy. <laughs> How's the, is it like dry or is it moist or? I want to say it's dry. Okay. It's a little drier than a beef meatball, I'd say. Mm. But the sauce definitely helps with that. And they hold together very well. Yeah, it, yeah. I saw whenever he was cutting it that it did look a little bit dry, and that's probably because again we did use turkey. It's not going to generate as much fat as beef would. I mm -hmm. beef would actually probably pre be still pretty good if you wanted to use beef instead. Um, so it'd be a little bit moister, and I think the flavors would still go really well with the beef. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, anything. They're very good. All right, very good. <laughs> very good. A little spicy. So yeah, if you want it, if you want a little less spice, just put a little less sriracha. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> do we have any questions about this so far? It's pretty straightforward. Thank you, Sharon. So I'm assuming I'm assuming those breadcrumbs are just in. I don't know if I've ever seen those. Are they in just the regular breadcrumbs area? Yes, so I'll go ones? ahead and tell you where I, again, I did my shopping at the San Marcos Bigger HEB. Um, this one I got with all the rest of the oils. So like in the section that has the olive oil, the, oh, what is it called? I'm for blanking, just vegetable oil, any other kind of oil. Um, you'll be able to find that one. This one, so all of these things actually, I found in the international food section at my HEB. Um, kind of with all the other Asian sauces. So I found the rice vinegar, I found the shiracha there, and I found the soy sauce there. The honey is obviously just where the honey and bread and jelly are. And then these are in the baking section, I believe. They're not, they're like close-ish to the flour. Um, so if you just keep okay. walking along, I'm sure in any HEB it's going to be in the similar section. It's usually in baking, um, I couldn't imagine that they'd put it anywhere else. And then obviously the spices and garlic, I got them from the spices and the, the produce section. But yeah, so the whole wheat, have, you've never used panko before? Mm -mm, no. Um, you usually use these a lot in like meat loaves, um, meat balls, things that you want to hold together really, really well. They probably did contribute to a little bit of the dryness because they're going to suck up a lot of that moisture and just expand. Mm -hmm. And so that moisture is not going to be able to be kind of felt in your mouth. Um, so if you wanted to try to make these just with eggs and turkey, then tell me how that goes because I'd be very yeah. interested in knowing. Um, but yeah. I, or, think or, I mean, or you could even try if you're doing beef, do like the 93%, yep. exactly. you know, so you're not getting that much, you know, grease in there whenever yeah. you're cooking it. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think the beef would actually still work really, really well with the specific sauce that I made. Oh, speaking of which, I need to go check on that make sure it's not burning. <laughs> okay. No, that looks really good. It's been simmering for enough time. It definitely looks all incorporated. I can attempt. Oh my goodness, the fumes are strong. I just put them all in my face. Um, you can't really see that, but again, they have a lot of the chunks in there, um, which I don't love for a sauce, but I think what I'll do again is just kind of um, put the meatballs in here, stir it and give it a good stir, and then put them into my serving dishes or 
storage dishes if you wanted to make this kind of as a meal prep recipe. You put that back over here. Oh, I have these. <laughs> so these are the meatballs without any of the sauce on them. Again, it, um, it does look a little bit dry to me. I don't know if these would freeze super duper well. So what I would try to do is actually put less of the panko. I think that would help with the dryness. And if you also wanted to get a higher fat, um, I don't know if they have a higher fat turkey. Maybe try it with beef. See if that works a little mm -hmm. bit better. But um, you can see like, I don't know if you can tell, they're a little bit dry. Still delicious though. I think the sauce will drastically improve the moisture content of it by just giving it a little bit of extra. Okay, well, we don't really have to sit around and wait for those meatballs to keep cooking. <laughs> um, do y'all have any other questions before? I can go ahead and end it today. I'm happy to see so many other people on here. <laughs> I know, it's great. I think y'all, a lot of you probably heard of the class from the Teams page, so I'm definitely going to keep posting it on there. And um, I did record today's um, meeting for anyone. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I recorded today's meeting for anyone who wants to view it again in the future and definitely utilize this recipe. Um, I think you'll have that available to you in the newsletter. And let, if, you let, if you make this, please let me know because I want to see how it turned out for everyone. And if you use beef, then definitely let me know because I might use it again for future recipes. <laughs> All right. Well, I will right. go ahead and end this one for today if no one has any other questions. I, I do have one more yeah. question. Where are you putting the videos? I don't know that yet. So um, I got an email from one of the pets. Josh, do you have an idea? Yeah. Um, sorry about that. Uh, we'll post them on the YouTube page. Um, okay. So if you go through the Texas State website uh, for searching the Wildcats website, you should be able to find it. Um, <clears throat> We're constantly trying to keep those uh, links up to date. So if you're searching for this afterward, you'll find it there. Okay. Thank you so much because I was not sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Could you put the link on the Teams um, page as well, Josh? I can do that. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Great. I can do that. All great. righty. Perfect. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for coming. I'll see you. All right. Thanks. If you want to come back. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.